future is calling you. Can you hear it? That's your future calling. Okay, that was fun. We're gonna do some test work on how to boost confidence when you feel down in the dumps. And in the meantime, while I get set up, so we'll let it run. All right, <clears throat> find my confidence. Done with our vocal, do a little bit of light vocal exercise for warm up. And uh, I don't know, should I wear the boa the whole way through? I mean, it's extra, it's super extravagant. Why not though? I made it. Okay. <laughs> what else do I need? Um, That's what I'll do. I'm going to read some scripts that I wrote and then just get used to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This will be good. Um, thum, 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 thum. Should I be in a chair? Should I just stand? Fear-based stalling. What are the ways that we all self-destruct? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go there. Number one, self-sabotage with deer in headlights, faking slow work, like acting like you're doing stuff but you're not actually getting anything done, or false action procrastination efforts. So now instead of faking that you're doing the work, you're doing things to prolong the actual activity of even faking doing the work or really doing it. Oh, terrible self-sabotage. I am guilty of it. Are you? When was the last time you self-sabotaged in either A or B? Tell me about it. I'd like to know. So number two, knowing what to do, but not being able to actually do it all the way to completion. Yay, killer, right? How many times have you started a project and you never finished it? And what are your excuses of why you didn't finish it? I don't know. If you sew, there's always the sewing bin of death, projects that go to die. If you write, maybe it's your unfinished book that you started but couldn't figure out the plot or couldn't work out some character storyline. Uh, maybe you're an engineer, maybe you're a creator, and you make things, you design how the logistics should go, and it's just not working out. So you toss it. <laughs> Could it have actually been solved if you worked all the way through the problem that had presented? What made you decide that that problem, that one at that moment in time was enough for you to shelve the project? I wanna know why, why, what was it? Tell me more. If that was a project you cared about, if it meant something to you, why did you shelve it? Okay, number three, three, yeah. Number three, forgetting where you are at in your work, what's been done and what needs to be edited and finished. How do you get started or restarted? This is equated to me like um, confusion connected with procrastination and timidity being that you just you starting projects you're feeling overwhelmed and you forget what you did maybe you need to keep a journal you need to keep a daily log of activities of that way you can actually see when you're doing work because sometimes my most productive days are so productive that they're so exhausting that I, I literally feel like I did absolutely nothing until I recollect myself the next day and take account to what was done. 
if I could remember. So, uh, likewise, um, sometimes you feel like you're having a really productive day, but if you kept a journal of your actual activities and what activities that you did, were they actually generating you closer towards your goal, actually getting you some kind of measurable result? What, what was the incentive and why were you doing it? You know, what would actually happen to it? Maybe some of the activities you did didn't actually need to be done and prevented you from doing more important activities. Number four, how can I stay focused consistently and get things done that matter and finished for once? So kind of like a recap of, of what we were just talking about, we want to be able to, to find that ability within ourselves to know what needs to be done, when we need to do it, how to break it down into smaller increments, and what we can do so that when we do have to have a break in our focus, what we could do to maximize our ability to get right back in. So there's methods that you can practice to help you get better at staying focused, but you just, you have to be dedicated to practicing them and believing in learning something that you're not familiar with and even feeling ridiculed by people who don't understand and don't believe in themselves. So you have to really ask yourself, what, what do you feel about your circumstance right now and how bad do you want to create change? And is it that you are creating change for yourself to better your life or to like in, enhance someone else's life that you care about? What's motivating you? <clears throat> so number five, what can I do to help manage my anxiety and bad habit of self-sabotage, fear-based stalling? What is it that I can do? When, when you look in the mirror and you look at this person that's looking back at you, that's the only person that's really in your head. There's people that can connect with you. I might know what you're thinking. You might think, you might think that someone else knows what you're thinking, but really only you are in your bubble and only I am in my bubble. And it, it, it's here, it stops at the end of my fingertips. And whatever else I let in is what I choose to let in. Or, unbeknownst to me and to many people, what information comes into you, not necessarily is what you allow in, but it's what's subtly slipped in without you realizing. And if you don't have your own values and beliefs set right within yourself, your core beliefs, will be easier for others to influence your outcome with you not even realizing it. And you must realize the amount of patience people have to do such things. So how strong is your patience to create the life that you want? Because other people have more patience than you to get what they want with you as their helper. Let's just say that nicely, okay? So, when you look in the mirror, what can I do to help manage my anxiety and bad habit for self-sabotage, my fear-based stalling, my strategy to overcome it so that I put myself back into control and that I can make sure that when I do feel anxious, because it will happen again, it won't go away, but hopefully it's lessened. It's less often and it's less vicious. And when it does happen, it doesn't make everything fall apart around me. How good would that be? How many situations could you improve personally for yourself or even to model that behavior so that the people around you who you see are learning bad habits from your behavior, what could they learn to model better habits? How could you save someone else the stress of, of what you are now seeing and learning to improve not just your life, but the life that you care about for someone else. Because be honest with yourself, when you think about things, do you, do you strive to do improve things just for yourself? Or is it because there's someone who really means something a lot to you? Maybe more than you mean to your own self. And you want something better for them, for that person, for those people. So beside yourself, why are you motivated to do these things? And if you can answer these five questions, it's really gonna help you understand your motivation and quickly check you back in 
to where you need to stay centered so that you can create the results that you want. It won't be easy. It never, I never said it's going to be easy. No one ever told me it would be easy. It's a bloodbath, the whole way of creating exactly what you want. But it's your knees that you're bleeding. It's your fingernails that are bleeding because you're creating the path that is best for you. And you're, you're the one on that path leading it alone. It's because you have to strive and that's why it hurts and that you're going to bleed your own blood, sweat, and tears. But only if you have that belief within yourself, that passion to know your motivation of why you are doing this when it is so difficult. So if you can track all fear-based stalling thoughts and behaviors and ways that you try to overcome them and then compare what the actual outcome is along with how I feel afterwards. Finally, what improvements or notes to reward my noticed improved commitment to my goal, to the ideal personal and professional character. So that's that internal motivation. How will I continue to motivate myself to continue? I need to see small steps moving forward so that I can catapult forward on bigger things because my confidence is gonna grow stacked on the small wins. And the only way I'm gonna know I'm winning even the smallest amount is if I track it. And it's tedious, it might be annoying as it is to write down every little thing that you do. Write down the things you don't do. If you vegetate for two hours watching TV, you achieve vegetation for two hours, mark that down, bravo, because you didn't do anything. You didn't do nothing, you did something. But hopefully it was educational, I don't know. If it wasn't, how did you feel afterwards? Did you not feel very good about the, if you were sluggish, if you were lazy? If you feel like for two hours watching TV, you, you lost two hours of your life? If you want some motivation to like stop vegetating on absolutely garbage television. Think about that if you watched four hours of television every day, the average amount that you would watch by the end of your lifetime, this is a study that I recently heard about, you would be having to have sat in a chair for 19 years watching television nonstop if you were watching an average of four hours a day every day for your whole life. Now, is that the kind of life that you actually want to live? 19 years in front of a television set? I hope you learned something good from it and it wasn't just all garbage. So think about, at least if you're writing down in a journal what you've been doing, you can monitor the garbage and begin to filter it out and not feel crazy. Even if everyone around you is completely telling you you're crazy, you're stupid, you should stop, why are you changing again, why bother trying, you know you're never going to fix yourself, you know it's never going to be the same, you know like it'll never work, you always try it, why are you doing this again? Like you can monitor your progress and only you are going to see that you are climbing up that battle, that hill, and that you are making big jumps slowly over time using small steps and only you will see it over time and it will remind you. So write it down, okay? Watch this again, continue to watch it as much as you need so that it can be the helpful voice that you need in your corner when everyone else is like saying, what are you doing? Why, what? Okay, I understand what you're going through. It's always gonna be hard, but like, What's your point? What's your perspective? Is your glass half full or half empty? How do you wake up in the morning? What do you appreciate? How do you feel? Are you positive or negative? It's not bad or good. What are you trying to attract? What are you putting out? I'm Teresa Ornelas, owner of the Paradox Parlor here in Manteca, California. It was a pleasure to talk with you today. I'm sending you love and light. I can't wait to hear more from you. To all my world-powered beauties, Keep getting it.